Welcome to Peter and Ruffy's Football Show here on STB2. The main talking points on tonight's programme. Rangers don't need to sell Morelos. Celtic need to up their bid for Carson. And Manchester City bid for Mares. Yeah, lots to talk about north and south of the border as the transfer window closing looms ever closer. It's all in the company of Alan Ruff and it's Tuesday. Our special guest is Simon Donnelly uh, to talk about uh, not only the morning headlines but uh, the emerging stories over Tuesday. So let's have a look at the newspapers, what dominates the back pages. Uh, Seven million is the claim from the Daily Record, uh, a bid from China for uh, Alfredo Morelos. Celtic in for Motherwell goalkeeper Trevor Carson but the bid is not enough and a beaming smile from uh, Charlie Musonda who's wearing the number 67 jersey for Celtic. That's the daily record and the Sun again with the number 7 right next to the replica of the European Cup and in the Sun it's Gers knocked back £5 million bid for Alfredo Morelos and next one is the Press and Journal uh, see you on the flip side this is of course um, Shea Logan uh, with the uh, celebration that he uh, usually does when scoring a goal not too sure Ruffy or Simon Donnelly would ever be able to replicate that um, but never Nevertheless, that's the back page headlines. Uh, so, a uh, couple of things to start with. Sad one to start with another news, uh, Ruffy. Uh, Dundee defender James McPake has finally uh, decided to quit professional football. Two years of injuries. It's uh, a bitter blow for a lad we've had on the programme on more than a few occasions. Yeah, we certainly have. And uh, obviously, if you cast your mind back to that horrendous you know, tackle, you know, it was a sore one. Everybody could see right away that it was a bad one, but yeah, he's been fighting it. Uh, he's obviously went into the coaching side well. He's yeah, been trying to get himself fit, but uh, yeah, I think we all wish him well because he was a superb player, not only for Hibs, but and Dundee. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, uh, before we look ahead to some of the games taking place tonight and tomorrow, uh, one match in the Scottish Cup last night, your old side St Johnston, uh, well, no problems against Albion Rovers, a Chris Kane hat-trick and a 4-0 win. Yeah, and I think they get the early goal as well, that probably settled them down, uh, Peter. Uh, potential banana skin at Albion Rovers, not the easiest place to go, and St Johnson, though, really having hit top form this season, I think they find themselves three points up off the, the 11th place, which is really unusual for them. They've been so successful over the last couple of seasons, you know, getting top six. Uh, Tommy Wright's did really well there. So it's a, it's, a good, it's a good result for them there. Yeah, Tommy Wright talking about maybe two players, possibly four players coming in before this window closes, Ruffy. Yeah, I think he needs to do that. I think they need to be refreshed. I think uh, they're a team that don't have a lot of budget. You know, he hasn't had a big turnover of players in the last two or three years. So this might be the time. You know, obviously he was disappointed at the weekend there and uh, he shuffled the pack a wee bit last night. But I certainly think a lot of experienced players there will know that they have to start playing well. Yeah, here's what's on offer over the course of the next 24 hours as far as the uh, fixtures are concerned. We're not too far away from Celtic against Hart kicking off tonight. We'll hear from Brendan Rodgers on the new signing and then of course uh, Wednesday it's Hibs against Motherwell and Ross County against <coughs> Aberdeen. There's also the small matter of the Scottish Cup Inverness Cali Thistle against Dundee and for Martin against uh, Cove Rangers and uh, there you can see it uh, taking place the fourth round replays and uh, let's also not forget that there's a long trip for some of the Rangers fans uh, on Wednesday, Fraserburgh against Rangers. Uh, so we'll discuss uh, those games, but uh, first and foremost, Celtic against Hearts, not too far away, um, this one. This could be with a little bit of needle, a wee bit of revenge, as we've been discussing over the last couple of days, Simon. Yeah, I think it sets up nicely the fact that Hearts have, you know, taking Celtic's scalp uh, not so long ago at Tynecastle. Uh, fantastic performance by Hearts and really battered Celtic on the on the day. So if I was a Celtic player, you know, they're coming to, to our home patch. I think the Celtic players will be ready for them tonight. Yeah, and of course, the, they've added uh, Charlie Musonda. Here's what the Celtic manager, Brendan Rodgers, makes of their new loan signing. He's a really exciting player, very dynamic. Uh, wonderful ability on the ball. Uh, works very hard, loves his football, he's a bright player. And we've been unfortunate this season really with injuries where 
last season we probably got lucky with injuries where we had very very few this year you know we've had a number of injuries which has been unfortunate and that's been to a lot of our creative players so he coming in will add that great creativity to our game and uh, like I said I'm really excited to work with him. A lot of good reports coming in from uh, Chelsea about Charlie Masonda, but it'll be interesting to see what he can offer Celtic, mm -hmm. Ruffy. Yeah, I think the Celtic supporters will be waiting to see if this is a 90-minute a signing. You know, I'm sure they want somebody in in that number 10 jersey to play that kind of role. You know, it'll be interesting to see uh, if he does start. You know, everybody's certainly talked him up. You know, talking about Real Madrid liking him, and obviously at Chelsea he's had seven games with them, so you would think he should be an automatic start, and that might be you know, something that Brendan Rodgers is thinking about. Yeah, well, uh, they're looking to add a goalkeeper. Um, <coughs> Charlie Masson is in. Possibly one other uh, that might sneak in the door for Celtic before that transfer window closes. Yeah, I think the, the keeper thing, the keeper situation is not ideal. Obviously, Craig Gordon took a sore one at the weekend, and I think it's 12 weeks, so that's pretty much the rest of the, the season, you know. So they've, they've looked at the, the, the boy Carson from Motherwell, who's had a great season. And obviously Mother are holding out, you know, for top dollar for the guy. Uh, they, they rate him highly. So we'll see how that kind of pans out. But I, I'm looking forward to Misonda. I think uh, Brendan spoke recently about lacking that wee bit of creativity. And I think they've been a wee bit flat Celtic. I think this boy can come in and maybe, you know, lift the players round about. OK, uh, from Celtic against Hearts. We'll reflect on that on uh, tomorrow night's programme. We'll switch to something we were waiting last night for, which was the overall result on the vote at the Aberdeen City Council on Aberdeen's plans for the new stadium at Kingsford. And they got the go-ahead, Ruffy. There's still a long way to go, government planning and uh, various other little hurdles that uh, Stuart Mill needs to get over. But I think this is a really positive step now, and it must uh, just fill the whole uh, of Aberdeen with optimism for the future. Yeah, it's a massive hurdle. Uh, I think Stuart Mill and then the, everybody at Aberdeen were a bit anxious about how this one was going to go but obviously it's went their way and I like what Stuart Millen's come out and said that okay they've, it's been passed there still are a lot of objections to it but he's more than happy to speak to these people he's more than happy to come and go with them you know and I think that's a good thing rather than saying look no we're not going to talk to you we're just going to batter on and do what we're doing so I think he's going about it the right way. Yeah this is the statement released by the Aberdeen chairman Stuart Milne uh, this is another big step along the way it, it's still got to go to the Scottish government and be cleared by them. I would hope we would get that clearance by March. There's obviously quite a lot of legal issues that need to be tied up, but all being well, we hope to be on the site in the summer and have the first phase delivered by summer next year. The target at the moment is that we can start playing there in season 2021-22. Uh, so Aberdeen fans will be uh, licking their lips at the prospect of a new stadium, new training facilities, and I think at that point as well, it gives them another Another extension of saying, you know, come up to a vibrant city, it's a one team city, look at the facilities. Yeah, and the graphics look great there, you know, the stadium, but I think you've touched on it there, the training facilities. I think Derek's went on record before, you know, at times they've been all over the place up there, they don't have their own training facilities. So to have that round about the stadium will be huge, you know, in terms of interacting players in. And I always think, uh, Ruffy, it's good to immerse yourself in the city if you if you buy into it. I mean, that was one of the things that uh, Fergie was able to do. There's quite a, pe a number of people in, in the, the glory days where they were from the west of Scotland, but he got them up there. They got them, you know, buying into the plan. And then slowly but surely, people who were from the west of Scotland were, you know, mm -hmm. totally behind the, the Aberdeen ethos. Yeah, I mean, you just have to look at, you know, obviously the crowds are getting just now are particularly good, but look at the numbers of the Brinkley Cup finals. You know, they, they can't sell enough tickets, so I think that's what they'll be trying to do. They'll be trying to buy in the whole Aberdeen into this is a community team. These are the training facilities we've got. Obviously, everybody will get uh, a wee bit of, of using it, you know, so it's just one big package that they're trying to get together. Yeah, it's a wee bit of nostalgia as well, Simon. There were some uh, great uh, memories up at Petodry for many Aberdeen. 
Aberdeen fans glory nights I'm sure they'll be looking back at some of those fabulous results Bayern Munich certainly <coughs> beating Bayern Munich will, will live long in the memory yeah I'm just about that age that I can remember those those <laughs> days the 80s uh, the successful 80s with uh, Sir Alex but yeah the, it's time for them probably to move on you know and try to get bigger and better things the stadium looks magnificent as I say if you can have the training facilities alongside that that's going to attract players to the club definitely uh, and the, the one element of it which I, I, I do hope he's able to see is the manager Derek McInnes I mean he's he had a big decision you know a heart and head and the dilemma over the approach from Rangers you know he's decided to stay there I do hope that he gets the chance to mm -hmm. build a team and be the first yeah. manager in there it would be a, a, a tremendous achievement and it would be the chance to maybe leave his own legacy up there yeah I've no doubt that was one of the reasons why he didn't go to Rangers obviously the the owner uh, convinced him that this was the way ahead this is the direction they're going the new stadium the new training ground obviously promised him maybe better players once he gets there so you know I think that's one of the reasons that Derek stayed okay we wish uh, Stuart Milne and of course uh, all of Aberdeen Football Club the best of luck with the remaining hurdles uh, and hopefully in 21-22 season we'll see a fantastic Kingsford Stadium and of course the Aberdeen players training in a facility they deserve uh, let's move on after the break uh, we will hear from Rangers manager Graham Murty Hibbs boss Neil Lennon as well but uh, we thought we'd give you a little tease a question into the break. Yeah, there's the answer to our teaser, David Beckham on loan at Preston North End. Uh, you'd do well if you actually held on to that jersey, Ruffy, if you were uh, the kit man or anyone else, if he'd played there. That would have been some sensational jersey to to be able to auction at some point in the future. Yeah, if you knew what the future was going to bring, <laughs> uh, certainly yes. But, uh, you know, I think we all knew there was four or five of them were just about to break into that Man United side. So, obviously, he had to start somewhere. Yep. We're going to talk about David Beckham a little later on in the programme about his new MLS franchise in Miami. Uh, but we will uh, now focus on Rangers and their game at uh, Fraserburgh in the Cup. Of course, there's been a lot of speculation, back page headlines about uh, additional players that they might be looking at to bring in, some that will be heading out. One of them, interestingly enough, Simon Donnelly, is the departure of Danny Wilson. This caught everybody, I think, by surprise. He's off to the MLS to yeah. Colorado Rapids. Yeah, a player that I liked before uh, uh, <coughs> broke through, obviously, Rangers before going down south. Uh, it seems to be a trend nowadays. I read Johnny Russell, I think, is considering going to the MLS as well. So it's, it's a new adventure, something new for them. Uh, and Danny's obviously decided to, to give it a go. Yeah, one of the uh, franchise owners was talking about, in fact, I think one of the board members of the MLS, Ruffy, was talking about the necessity to not only develop their own American kids, but if anybody is coming into the MLS now, they want it to be the younger variety. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they've tried it two or three times. I was actually part of the second uh, time at Orlando. I was over there for a year. I can see the reasons why you'd want to go. Uh, basically, family reasons would be up there for your kids. It's a wonderful environment to go into. Uh, as you know, they're very passionate about their game. I, I thought it was a surprise as well. I thought Rangers maybe tried to hold on to them, you know, because I thought... Yeah. Was beginning to be the centre half that uh, they just needed somebody beside, you know, to 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 move them on, but. I think he's made the decision and uh, I don't think he'll be let down when he gets there. It's a very progressive league. Yeah, but he was, I think, the last six months of his contract, so maybe Rangers mm. were obviously trying to get an indication of what he wanted to do on this. I'm not sure there'd be too much cash, if any, that would be uh, transferred from Colorado to Rangers. Um, but I, I think they were just looking for a definitive answer from him on what is your career path here. Yeah, I think, I think there would have been a future there for him if he'd you know, wanted it, uh, but he's obviously had the interest from the States and, and that's kind of turned his head and you know he wants to go down that route. Yeah, now the other uh, story, and I, I have to say I'm going to treat it with uh, a certain amount of, what's the word I'm looking for, disdain, uh, Ruffy, because if uh, a Chinese side had offered £7 million 
to Rangers for Alfredo Morelos. I'm, I'm sorry, but Dave King would have Alfredo Morelos in a car, driving him to Beijing, uh, to any destination you want in China, and taking the seven million. You do not go through a club with soft loans and get an offer in for a player of Morelos's calibre and not take seven million or even five million in my book. Yes, I, I think a lot of people in the financial side will be a wee bit amazed with this one. Uh, I think obviously they got him for a million. I, I don't think he, we've seen the full potential of him. He's still a young player. He still is scoring goals. But to say a bit of seven million and you don't, it's not up to your valuation of him. So, no, I think uh, the, the figures have been thrown about here, you know, for the back of the paper uh, and obviously the supporters. But. Uh, I agree with you. If that was money on the table, I think Rangers would have taken it. I think the board would take it. Um, mm -hmm. I, I, I'm disassociating myself with the, sto the figure, the story, yeah. and what the board would be looking at. If there was a genuine <coughs> offer there, uh, this board would look at that and say, and rightly so, we need that money. <coughs> it might pay off some soft loans. Yeah. But it also might allow Graham Murty to continue with Mark Allen in the vein that they seem to be going down at the moment, which is quite simply, let's buy some good Scottish prospects. Even yeah. if they got two million, they could buy two or three really good Scottish players. Simon. I know it doesn't make sense. I think if they were the figures that were getting branded about, you'd be biting their hand off for it. Uh, I'm with Ruffy. I think the boys came in. He's, he's top goal scorer in the league. Am I right in saying that? He's 13 goals he's got. He's got potential there. Still a young lad. He's been there half a season. And if the, the value was seven million, you would take it all day. Yep, absolutely. This is what uh, Graham Murty had to say on the possibility of Morellas departing. I won't comment on the figure, but once again, it's a footballing decision. I've, I've not been told there's any economic necessity to change, to move him away. It's about footballing decisions, about making sure we close the gap. If we make a footballing decision that we can actually um, push on by keeping him, then that's what we do. I'm not going to allow a player to leave just because there are lots of zeros involved. We have to make sure that we actually make good, solid footballing decisions. Taking Alfredo out of our squad without a ready-made replacement to strengthen us is not a decision I'm prepared to make. Yeah, well, on that basis, uh, I understand where Graham's coming from. It's not a, a decision you're prepared to make, but if there was even a sniff of someone potentially bidding, I'd have a list under the table <laughs> of the other players that I was going to get in and pronto. Yeah, I know there's only 24 hours to go, but certainly the, the way teams work now, you know, there's players getting signed right up until the last minute. I think if you had seven million in the bank, you would just need to be on the end of the phone. Another lone player coming up. We've got Jason Cummins there, who's already scored. Yeah. I'm sure they have the ability and the players there to, to get them where they are but uh, obviously I don't think Graham will, will be too unhappy about the obvious financial people making that decision because he'll want every player possible to, to get that second place. Yeah, uh, of course there could be some dealings before <coughs> the end of the transfer window this month. This is uh, a transfer window that the Rangers manager is not a fan of. It's a difficult circumstance. I'm not sure I agree with the transfer window mechanism anyway. I'm, not, I'm definitely not sure I agree with the fact that it's not synchronised across the globe. There are different windows open until later than ours. Um, it's just a, a situation we have to deal with and I'm sure that right up until the window our director of football and myself will be fielding calls about our players and about players potentially who want to come here. Um, but we have to make good solid footballing decisions to make sure we enhance our squad uh, and enhance our challenge of, of closing the gap to those in front of us. Do you think they should all be brought in uh, together, uh, Ruffy, and everyone has to abide by a window that starts at a certain time and closes globally? Yeah, I think I think it's the loan thing that, that uh, I have the most grievance about. I think uh, some teams are using it more than others. I think there need to be a cap on that. I think uh, we always keep talking about, you know, we want to see young Scottish players coming through. We want to see them getting games. You know, if you continually go down and take a, a crucial part of the season and take four or five players on loan, these young players are again being stifled and they're not getting enough game time. So it's an unfortunate thing. I'd, I'd, I I would like to see the cap, the cap being brought in. Yeah, uh, okay. Any problems for Rangers at Fraserburgh, apart from no. travelling up there? No, I don't think so. I think <laughs> the weather. Uh, <laughs> the weather. Uh, yeah, it's supposed to be snowing later on, later 
enough. But uh, no, I think Rangers will go up there and do a professional job. Uh, and I wouldn't be surprised if Morales gets a hat trick. Yeah, absolutely. And it increases his value even more by tomorrow's bank page headlines. Um, OK, uh, let's move on to <coughs> Hibs against uh, Motherwell. It's uh, Neil Lennon's side against Stephen Robinson. Uh, of course, I think Neil Lennon, despite the defeat at the weekend, quite happy with the way his side is playing. Well, we've had three tough away games where we played yeah, re particularly well in the last two. Didn't play great against Hearts, but like I said, there's nothing in the game. Played very, very well at Dundee and we were excellent against Celtic on Saturday. And I don't like losing, but the performance gave me a lot of encouragement. You know, m mentally the team was strong and physically they were strong. And they're unlucky not to come away with something against the champions, which you don't say very often. If you were assessing Hibs, you would probably look uh, at Neil Lennon's team. I mean, Neil Lennon said that they're playing well. I, I don't think you can discount that. Sometimes managers paint pictures that are actually not there, but they, yeah. they are good to watch. They just haven't been able to be clinical. I think uh, over the period of, from the start of the season, I think they've been the, the second best team to watch out with Celtic. I know Celtic have went a wee bit flat recently, but Hibs have put some really good performances in. I've seen them at Celtic Park draw two each other in the season. They should have beat Rangers at Easter Road. They've got some really good players and I like watching them. The weekend for me, I think, I, I, I listened to Lenny after it. I know they had a couple of chances. I thought Celtic were reasonably comfortable with their win. But Hibs have got some good players. I think the, the, the thing with Stokes has obviously not helped them. I know, again, Lenny said he didn't think it affected the Derby game. I think the likes of Stokes can create something out of nothing. Uh, so they maybe have to look to bring somebody in just to finish these chances off or finish these moves off, rather. I listened to the Dundee game, and albeit they won last week, they could have put that game to bed a lot sooner, you know, if they'd taken their chances. So I think that's the wee thing that maybe frustrates them at the moment. And you look at maybe eight or nine draws there, if, if you take your chances, they could be three or four wins, and you could be closer to Rangers and Aberdeen. Yeah, of course, the manager could still add some players before that window closes. I mean, it's difficult at the best of times, but you always know that something may or may happen, not happen uh, at the end of the window. People get... Clubs want to do business, players want to play, players want out of clubs, players want into clubs. So it's very, very difficult, you know, on the last day of the window to actually have a game while there's maybe deals going on. OK, there's not a lot of time, Ruffy, for ducking and diving, but Neil's a master of that anyway. He'll be in the background with a few agents just trying to maybe shift a few players out and then maybe get the odd one in. And I, I do think, you know, striker is the priority for them. Yeah, well, I think if you look at the, the strength of the Hibs team, it's the two wide players, uh, Boyle on one side, Barker on the other. Both of them will get tremendous pace, but when they get the, the dangerous situation and they're putting the ball into the box, they've got a young Ollie Shaw, a young boy Murray, two inexperienced strikers who are still finding their way in the game. I think that's what he needs. He needs a, a proven goal scorer, whether it's from England or whatever division. And I, I think then you'll see Hibs relaxing a wee bit more and winning games more comfortably. Yep, OK. Um, we're going to get your thoughts on who you think is going to win that match uh, just shortly, lads. But we'll be uh, delving into the Motherwell camp. Of course, the worst thing for Stephen Robinson, the Motherwell manager, is to try and fend off an approach for uh, your goalkeeper. Uh, we'll talk about that and hear from the Motherwell boss next. to believe it, 1964, it just shows you how good a player Dennis Law was. I mean, even in 1964, I would suggest to you, Ruffy, there were across the globe some fantastic, technically gifted mm -hmm. players, but the Law man was up there. Yeah, he certainly was, and obviously, as Simon was saying there, we all thought it would be just when they go to the European Cup, thought, the, 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 European the, the Wembley 3-2 game, you know, but obviously before that, you're right, there was players all over Europe, you know, were fantastic to, 
So one at the end is a marvellous achievement. Yeah, it's strange actually, but uh, because of the age of yourself, Simon, and, uh, and myself as well, I'm including myself yeah, with you on yourself. this, just, uh, <laughs> I would love to have seen uh, Dennis Law and George Best in their prime because so many people of your generation, Ruffy, just rave about them uh, as if they were something really special to savour. Yeah, I think any time you get a chance to see them, particularly George Best, and, and I know everybody goes on about parks being fantastic and we need wonderful quality parks and I agree with that uh, it makes football better but if you get a chance to see George Brest going through the mud against Bournemouth where he takes on about eight players and the ball's not even left his foot <laughs> once you know it just shows you the ability yeah. that the guy had he, he was just super yeah that's what I, I love about you Ruffy I mean uh, he could beat six or seven players but Ruffy said eight and people will now go on to YouTube and go best eight players yeah. Bournemouth <laughs> He went, he went by a couple twice. He went by, then he came back. Couple, <laughs> yes. round, yeah. He was actually capable of doing that. I can't knock you on that one. Uh, okay, we heard from the Hibs boss, Neil Lennon, just before the break. Well, what about the opposition? Motherwell manager uh, Stephen Robinson has to try and go to Easter Road and get something from the game. And uh, again, the first thing he's going to talk about is just trying to fend off maybe an increased bid from uh, Celtic for Trevor Carson. It certainly wasn't enough first time around. Spoke to Brendan yesterday. Uh, made the courtesy to ring me uh, and, and done things professionally. He, um, we then passed it over to the the money men, Alan Burrows and Peter Lawwell. Um, they they had a chat. Um, we realised our, our valuations were were miles away from each other. Um, so and that's that's as far as it's gone at the moment. What I do know is Trevor Carson is very much committed to Motherwell. Um, he's a Motherwell player. He's got two and a half years left on his contract and it was 24 hours before the end of the window. So people will be sold from this football club at the right price, the right valuation, when we decide, not when other people decide. So that's where we are at this moment in time. Good answer from the Motherwell manager, and the reason it's a good answer is because he mentioned the critical thing there. He's got two and a half years left in his deal, so £200,000 <coughs> is certainly not going to be enough. No, and the other critical thing is he's got two days to the transfer window finishes, <laughs> so you lose your keeper and you're scrambling to get somebody in. Uh, I think just that's, going back to what Murty was talking about with the, the transfer, and that's one of the downsides of this transfer window. You know, if, if they were to lose their goalkeeper now, you know, they're under severe pressure to replace him. What do you make of him? Yeah, I think the reason that Celtic have went for him, I think uh, any of the times that uh, Motherwell have played Celtic, he's been a star man. Uh, I think Brendan Rodgers was really impressed by one of the games. I think it finished one each or something like that. But uh, no, he's a quality goalkeeper. I think he's played for the Irish B side uh, a couple of times. So. You're right, I think it's a massive decision by Motherwell because we talk about £200,000 being not enough, but to a club like Motherwell, £200,000 is a lot of money. Uh, and all credit to the board, uh, which are the majority of fans who have made the decision to stick by the manager and the team. You know, they could have easily said, yeah, you've got to take this, but they haven't. So we'll have to wait and see if that gets improved. OK, November and December has been a bit of a nightmare for uh, Motherwell, but they started to pick up of late unbeaten in three. Yeah, a good, a good week for them actually. They beat Hamilton in the cup, obviously their rivals. I was at the game against Ross County, a good win. And then a, a, a decent point at Tynecastle. Uh, I touched on it, the two strikers they brought in. Obviously, I, I know Sifji really well. If they can get him firing, they've, they've really won a watch with him. And the other lad that I was impressed with the other night was the, the boy Main. You know, he put himself about, really hard working, got his goal, and pops up with the equaliser at Hearts at the weekend. So I think if those two you know, can get themselves going in a wee partnership, I think that will keep well safe. Yeah, uh, and just on that point, uh, Ruffy, uh, you always look at a top goal scorer like Louis Mould, and not too many people have mentioned <coughs> Louis Mould in the last week or two. I mean, he deserves, you know, to be held in high esteem with the Motherwell fans, but it's all it's all seemed to have uh, moved along quite smoothly. Yeah, he's been very fortunate. It's always good when you bring a player in, particularly a striker, uh, who scores early on, because there's lots of strikers come to teams they don't score for seven or eight and everybody starts questioning and was oh, this a good sign and but uh, he's obviously worked really hard to get this guy and uh, and I thought in the last two games that I've saw him he's been particularly good and effective it was interesting the boy Bowman he's going to be out he got a smashed cheekbone during training 
That's a surprise, isn't it? Uh, yeah, um, you're such a, you're such a bad person, Robbie. You, you really are. Um, um, I hope he has a speedy recovery as I try to dig myself out of a hole with Ruffy there. Um, but he is a key player for them, and that is a, a big blow. So from uh, Hibs against Mother, who's going to win it? Hibs for me, 2-1. Uh, I thought if Hearts had taken their chances at the weekend, they would have won that one. So I think it's all about Hibs getting that second goal. Yeah, I agree with Ruffy. I think Hibs at home, uh, unlucky at the weekend, you know, against Celtic. Played some decent stuff, but I think they've got the players there that will get the home win. OK, Ross County against Aberdeen up at Dingwall once again. They made it a little bit nervy for Rangers, but I, I thought in the end, over the piece, Rangers were worthy of their win. Owen Coyle has to pick the team back up again because points at this point period are crucial to Ross County. Yeah, I think Owen Coyle will be scratching his head just now, uh, wondering how he's going to turn this round. The first half performance against Rangers was poor. I think if you look at both Rangers' goals, first one, the goalkeeper could have done better. Second one, Ross Draper could have passed it one of his own players, and that would have been two goals, and they might have been in with a chance. So I think they've really got to stop you know, creating their own downfall, possibly when we try and get an early goal. But Aberdeen have struggled at Ross County County on numerous occasions. They don't go up there and win very comfortably. They'll have to fight tooth and nail to get the win, which I think they will. Yeah, here's uh, what the county boss makes of Aberdeen. I'm expecting a very attack-minded game today, and, and we'll look to be back at home. It was actually really nice to, to be back the other day. We had five of our previous six games away from home, so it was nice to get back here. Uh, the fans were great, got behind the team, and really it's up to us now to, to start rewarding those fans, start to get a smile on their face and pick up the points and win games. And the only way to do that is by working hard and bringing our own quality in the game, being very mindful and respectful of, of Aberdeen's you know, undoubted quality, looking to match that and make sure we try and nullify the threat. And, and try and impose herself in the game and play her own brand of football. Ross County without a win in 12. I wouldn't be surprised if they brought in another 19 players before the window shuts because, if anything, at Ross County under Roy McGregor, he usually just thinks, here's the league position, here's the money, buy four or five players and try and get us out of this. I think Ross County are struggling. I watched them, as I say, at Fir Park last week. I wasn't impressed at all. I know they brought one or two players in. I think young Harry Souter will be a good acquisition, you know, but he's a young boy fending his way in the game. Uh, and Gog with his experience up front, but I think they're struggling. Uh, I watched them in that game. I watched them against Rangers. I thought both times they were poor. Uh, I agree with yourself. I think Rangers won it easily, albeit they score it in the, the last minute. Uh, I expect Aberdeen to... Well, the Aberdeen to do what they normally do in the back of a bad result. They bounce back at the weekend, and I think they'll go on a run. I think they'll beat Ross County. Yeah, the, the one thing about it, I'm going to reserve judgment, Ruffy. I've got Ross County. I think I had Hamilton Ackies relegated or Ross County relegated, another one in the, the playoff. You change from time to time. I'm going to wait and see, you know, probably the end of February, I think, to get a better insight into where I think Ross County are going to finish either relegated or playoff, just because they always do those last minute deals that enhance them I have to say I really like the look of the boy Suter he, he's, he's much the same as his brother they, he comes out at the back he's got a bit of height a bit of presence about him yeah but I think maybe it's just the case that like all the other teams down there you just need a win you know, to get the confidence back in. I was listening to Billy Dodds after the game. He was watching them, and he's obviously been up there, and he couldn't believe what he was seeing. You know, the players, the the, the level of performance. I suggested that there was more than a tank. That's didn't right. Yeah. You know, he was looking at certain players and going, "I can't believe the level that they're at. They should be better than that." So I think it might just be a confidence thing. You know, I think it'd just be one win away for turning it all round. Yeah. Well, they're up against an Aberdeen side with only two defeats in nine, and uh, is. Simon says they, they do bounce back really quickly. I, I'm looking at them and I, I wouldn't be surprised if they were able to just sneak somebody in before that window closes as well because of the gauntlet that's been thrown down by Rangers. Yeah, but I think it's all a bit loan now. I don't think there's much money going about just now. So obviously, as you've said there, you would like to think that most managers would have a list of players that they, they think would they'd be available that they could go onto the wage bill. But a lot of them need somebody out the door before that can happen. So I I think uh, the deadline could be more exciting than it would usually is. Yeah, if I was Derek McInnes, I'd just be absolutely praying that nobody comes in with a sufficient bid for Scott McKenna. I mean, if you look at his goal, 
I'll be hard pressed to think anybody's going to score a better goal this season. Well, yeah, well like you say that McGinn scores a great goal in that game as well, and uh, Mackay Stephen the week before. But the boy, what a strike! I mean, I think McKenna said himself the whole stadium kind of thought at the point, "What are you doing here, this from 40 yards?" But a fantastic strike, and as you say, a great, great Scottish player. Uh, I think Aberdeen, you know, will kick on again. I think he's frustrated, obviously, with the, the Rangers' results and maybe coming to Celtic Park and not getting the result. But what they do, and they do really well, is they, when they bounce back, they go on a run of six or seven games and keep themselves right in touch. Prediction? I'll go for 3-1 Aberdeen. 2-1. Um, two one. Two Aberdeen. 2-1 two for Aberdeen. I knew you were going for Aberdeen anyway. You didn't really need to mm -hmm. back that up, uh, Ruffy. Uh, OK, uh, what do you think? At Peter and Ruffy on Twitter, facebook.com forward slash Peter and Ruffy. You can give us your thoughts on your favourite team. Uh, tomorrow night, undoubtedly, on the programme, we'll be talking about Hamden, the future, whether it's going to be Scotland playing at the National Stadium or not. Coming up after the break, we'll take a look at uh, some of the movers and shakers down south where there's uh, bundles of cash. Join us after the break. Yeah, welcome back to Peter and Ruffy's Football Show here on STV2. Michael Higdon, did you get it? These two guys were struggling right up until the end there. Uh, especially you, how could you forget his name? I mean, you never forget a name of anybody who buys you a drink, Ruffy. And he bought us a drink after after picking up the award. Sadly, he got huckled after that, but never, yeah. <laughs> nevertheless. Yeah. Yeah, I thought you were out of order, not going to see him after he bought you a drink. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, it was a good interview as well. But to when he came up to get his award, it was it was quite entertaining. <laughs> no, he wasn't. He was he was looking and wondering what I was asking him. He was uh, three sheets to the wind, and uh, I always like the Motherwell players because they they decide to go for it early, thinking they're not going to win an award. And that night they were in a state of shock um, when Michael Higdon uh, picked up the Player of the Year. Uh, he was, uh, you know, one of those. Old style centre forward, Simon, because holding it up, bringing other players into it, and he could score a goal and put himself about. He was, and that just seemed to be the perfect season for him. You know, I think he went on and scored 20 odd goals that season for Mullow, which was incredible. I was just saying there to Ruffy in the break that we tried to get him at York when we were down there. Uh, I can't remember where he was, and he would have done a job for us there. Uh, unfortunately, we never got him. Yeah, M Michael Higdon, um, great lad. We'll need to get him back up, Ruffy, for a wee night out. Maybe leave him once he gets to the point where he's just gone over the edge but nevertheless I wonder <laughs> I wonder where the award is as well um, listen talking about the transfer window which uh, of course it goes right down to the wire I always think it's more exciting down south really, <coughs> just because of the amount of money that's on that's on offer it's obscene to be perfectly honest with you at times yeah it is obscene but it is exciting when you see the the, the, the teams flashing up and the players that they're interested in uh, some they get, some they don't get. You know that. Well, that's why it must be so exciting being a, a supporter down there. When you see the, the list of names that are getting associated with your club, I, I think there'll be still a lot of wheeling and dealing down there, and a lot of money thrown about because uh, they just go for it big time. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, uh, some of the moves and the the last minute moves. I mean, I, I almost fell off the chair laughing the other day. I was listening to um, one of the sports uh, talking shows, and they suggested it's just. A uh, it's terrible that uh, Chinese football can p pay ups, you know these exorbitant amounts of money uh, to take players away it's just it's just not fair and I thought to myself that's a bit rich coming from your country yeah well it could be a bit closer to home especially like Sir Sanchez's deal to Man U uh, they're certainly throwing the cash about down there I think Arsenal will probably have a wee bit more activity before the, the transfer window's out as well and, and Man City look as if they're looking at a couple of players as well yeah um OK, uh, uh, Chelsea, Eden Hazard, it never goes away. There's no smoke without fire. He's a <coughs> special player. They have mentioned the fact that they would knock back any bid. They were talking about Manchester City coming in with a bid, Ruffy, for Eden Hazard. But they're, they're now looking at £200 million, uh, yeah. for Eden ha Hazard. Is he up there with a Neymar? Um, 
I think in a, in a better side with better quality players yet, I would say he's he's got something special uh, to offer. I think the, the benchmark obviously is Coutinho. You know, he was 150 odd. You know, I think he's up there with him, if not better. So again, it depends on what club and how much money they've got and what they want. You could probably add, you could probably argue Hazard's been more consistent over a lo longer period in the Premiership than Coutinho as well. Uh, but both both excellent players. Yeah. Would you buy in? Would you buy in to about 200 million? Though? I would. I. I yeah. Would. Yep. Yeah. I think he's top class. I think he is. I think the Chelsea team of late have kind of taken a wee bit of a dip, but he's always the main man. You know, in their team. Yeah, well, isn't, it, isn't it great? Simon just says that as if it's just a fit. Ah, yeah, he's worth 200 million. It's just outrageous. Uh, the the current market. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what about 60 million pounds for Riyad Mahrez? This is a, a late swoop from Manchester City trying to tempt Leicester City. If I was Leicester, I would think 60 million. Thank you very much. Yeah, well, I thought then uh, when they won the league that year, I think he was the main man. He was absolutely fantastic. I don't know if he's hit the heady heights of that year, but he certainly is a quality player. And I don't think they would be going for him if they didn't think he could be an asset to that team. But they seem to be in overdrive now. I think they really believe that uh, they can do something in Europe this year. Yeah, well, I watched them in the cup. I'm now, I'm now actually having serious reservations about tipping any team to stop them at home and abroad. They're playing a brand of football which is really special. They've just brought in uh, another defender, uh, Americ Laporta from Athletic Bilbao. £57 million pounds yeah. they've spent on him. And I think now that takes, uh, since the end of last season, City's spending uh, to £215 million. Pounds. You would expect them to be in, the shout for, in with a shout for four trophies. Yeah, and, and maybe that's why they're bringing, because you can only play 11. I mean, Mares, where's he going to fit into the strike force, you know, moving forward? The little boy Silva had a great game at the weekend. David Silva, who I think is excellent, still to come back. Uh, so maybe that is Pep's thinking. He's, you know, for the quadruple, he's looking at bringing in extra players there to kind of rotate it even more. Yeah, I don't see anybody touching them. I mean, they're going to win that league at a canter by the end for me. I think they could be up as far as 19, 20 points, mm -hmm. Ruffy. Yeah, but I think he's got uh, bigger things in mind. I think he actually thinks Champions League. I think he thinks he's got a chance of that. I think he obviously thinks Barcelona, Real Madrid are possibly on the way. But well, we keep saying that every year. I think the strengthening of the centre half, obviously the company carrying an injury, you know, I think that's boy will fit the bill and he certainly, he certainly seems to be you know covering all the bases you know and if, if the Manchester City team gets the line up gets put out there and the Guerra's know in it you know they certainly have quality players if he can't get it, 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 that's the thing as well even the cups he seems to be playing strong teams in the cups you know some teams are guilty of playing their second string but he seems to from the, the weekend there anyway that was a strong team he put out yeah but even even if two or three of them are out we're not talking about a million pound player coming no. in we're talking about a player that could easily grace any team in the Premier League in England you know at, at the drop of a hat they're worth that much this, this is a substitute trophy yeah I know and I'm still I'm still obviously uh, biased towards goalkeepers I, I think if you're going to start winning Champions Leagues you've got to, you've got to have a top class goalkeeper you've got to have a Schmeichel you've got to have somebody that can do it at the big games and I don't have a lot of confidence in this Man City boy just now I know he has some fantastic games but I think in the big ones he's, he's prone to the odd laps or two yeah, that's an interesting one uh, from Ruffy there. Um, I don't know if you spotted him at the weekend in the FA Cup match. Uh, he managed to take a volley pass back from company, beat two players uh, <laughs> calmly <laughs> and move Man City up the park. Stop. What more do you want Stop. from Stop. a goalkeeper? Yeah. Well, it's, it's, it's kind of a reflection of the way Pep wants to play on it. He, he wants to you know, the keeper to be comfortable with the ball at his feet and be able to keep possession there. Uh, we see it in our division, obviously, with Brendan trying to adopt it with Craig Gordon. Uh, that seems to be the, the theme uh, with Pep, so you've got to be comfortable with the ball at your feet, I'm not sure. Boy, mm -hmm. well, he is. I've, I've seen a clip of him, you know, I think it was five or six deliveries, I mean, pinging the ball like 60 yards on somebody's chest. What's your thoughts on it? Oh, oh I think he's, he's the best at, it, at that, but obviously I've got a priority of stopping the ball at the, the back of the net. Yeah. Sometimes this year he has, he has had 
some bad ones. Yeah, you could handle that though, Ruffy, in the modern game if you were playing right now because you like to play out as well. But although many a, a player who's played with you has mentioned the fact that you are a great shot stopper. Yeah, you've got to add the two of them together. You, know? you, can't, you can't just be good at one. <laughs> <laughs> no, I ended up in the halfway line at Hamden one day in a Scotland-England game and never again. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I still have nightmares about it. <laughs> yeah, well, you can panic at these things, to be fair, once we... Just, uh, I'm curious to get your thoughts on this. With Craig Gordon out, which is a blow to Celtic, the talking Doris De Vries, if they were to get Trevor Carson, who would be? Is Carson just bought as a backup to yeah, De Vries? Yeah, most definitely. I think he's yeah. got to give De Vries a shot. He's got to give him as many games as possible. I don't think he's had enough game time, particularly with the European game coming up. He needs as many games as possible. Yeah, you buy into that, Simon? I think so. I think he's been he's said as much himself. You know, he's been patient. Ruffy will kind of back me up. It's an unusual position. You know, you have to bide your time to get your chance, and now he gets his chance, so you've got to give him give him time. Okay, uh, we had one of the questions, which was all about uh, David Beckham. Uh, I just wonder, lads, he's one of those icons, a global icon at that. Uh, he's now got an MLS franchise, and in America, they want to try and promote the youth develop it as well as bring in some superstars as well but any superstars they are going to bring in I think you'll start to see younger players go to the MLS yeah I was in Miami uh, a couple of years ago when it was all going on in the papers and he certainly picked the right place for a football team uh, they're so passionate down there in their football and uh, they've been starved of it I think they'll get right behind it and I think you'll see fantastic crowds going to the games he's obviously started talking about uh, big big players coming for Europe and that that will just be the, the seller for them but uh, you're right he's got to promote he's got to promote the local kids because uh, there's so many of them playing football now then uh, that will be the success for them yeah it'll be interesting to see uh, if the MLS learns the lessons of the past I, I, you know from my experience of being over there and talking to uh, so many of my cousins a lot of the youngsters are playing football they're all playing soccer as they call it um, just quickly before we finish did you think David Beckham at any point was world class yes yeah yeah I think th yeah uh, uh, for me Beckham uh, people have always have a knock at him with you know his, the commercial his side of it yeah. his image but for me when he was on the pitch he was excellent Ruffy yeah, he, he won games single-handedly for England uh, and then most of the clubs that he played for, so that's good enough for me. OK, um, it's all about opinions. You might agree, <clears throat> you might disagree. Uh, that's what the programme's about. Thanks to Simon Donnelly and uh, Ruffy for joining me on the programme tonight. Uh, don't forget, you can join us tomorrow. Barry Ferguson is, as ever, our Wednesday pundit. You can uh, put some questions to him at Peter and Ruffy on Twitter and Facebook.com forward slash Peter and Ruffy. We're back on STV 2 at 7.30. Hopefully you can join us then. Thanks for watching.